Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's introduction to your social studies analysis. Uh, social studies analysis is something that you must do every year in social studies class at Waldo Middle School. Uh, you may recall in sixth grade you had to write a paper about the Columbian Exchange. Uh, you may recall in seventh grade you had to write a paper about the Black Death. This year you are going to write a paper about Manifest Destiny, but the one difference is there are multiple topics. So it's going to be a little bit more interesting because you are a little bit older and more capable in terms of your writing abilities. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and read the summary here. Each sem semester, social studies students at Walden Middle School are required to write a social studies analysis. This is a written, research-based essay in which students research and evaluate an important historical event or issue from multiple perspectives. This is required by the Salem-Kaiser School District and will be evaluated on a rubric based on state standards. Each category will be evaluated separately, five points each, so on a one to five scale, and then added up for a summative grade in the class. In order to pass the state standard, you must get a four or higher in each category. So what you need to know is that this is an informative paper and it is a research-based paper. Um, this is going to be a little bit more like language arts class with social studies as the content uh, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, the other thing you need to know is that this is going to go on your permanent record. So not only is this just a grade in social studies class, but you are going to receive a work sample score which will be your social studies work sample score for your eighth grade year, and that will go on your permanent file with the district. So with that, we're going to move on. These are the four categories you are going to be graded on in terms of the paper itself. Uh, you will also get 20 points for going through the process of researching your paper and writing a rough draft. So once you show me a completed research matrix, and once you show me a completed rough draft, you will automatically have earned 20 of the 40 points for this assignment. The other 20 points are going to be the paper itself, and each of these five categories, actually each of these four categories, represents five points each. The first category is what we're going to call frame. In other words, your introduction. I'm basically asking two questions there. Uh, do you introduce your topic effectively? And do you get the reader, in other words, me, interested in what you're going to write? If you achieve those two objectives, you will get a four or a five on your introduction. The next category is research. Um, how much information did you get? Did you get that information from more than one source? And do you cite those sources in your paper? You must cite those sources appropriately in your paper, and we will talk about how to do that. So you're going to need a minimum of three sources. Um, those sources are going to need to be cited, and you are going to have to comprehensively answer the research question in order to get a four or a five in the research category. Your next topic is called examine, and this is, I believe, the most challenging one because you're supposed to look at multiple perspectives on your topic. So do you make a clear effort to look at more than one perspective on your issue? Do you discuss each perspective with thoughtfulness and detail? And do you make evidence-based claims? So in this case, for example, if you're talking about the Mexican-American War, you're going to want to talk about the Mexican perspective and the American perspective. If you're talking about the Oregon Treaty, you're going to want to talk about the British perspective and the American perspective. If you're talking about the Trail of Tears, you're going to want to talk about the Native American perspective and the American perspective. Uh, if you don't do that, then you're not going to get a good grade on the examine portion of your paper. And finally, you're going to have to write an effective conclusion. After examining multiple perspectives, do you make a claim that is clearly stated that you support with appropriate facts and research-based evidence? Does the reader feel that you have gained knowledge on the topic, formed an opinion, and stated that opinion clearly? Basically, you want your conclusion to leave the reader feeling convinced that you know what you're talking about 
and that you have a distinct perspective about what you're talking about that you have articulated clearly. If that is the case, you will get a four or a five on your conclusion. Uh, in order to pass the state standard, you must get a four or a five in each of these four categories. This is our research question, otherwise known as the prompt. This is what you are going to be answering with your paper. What was Manifest Destiny? What aspect of Manifest Destiny are you researching? What lands were in question with your aspect of Manifest Destiny? Who lived in or owned the land that the United States wanted? What tactics did the United States use to obtain the land? What events took place? What was the final result? And what were the long-term consequences? This is a very long prompt. Uh, each of these questions in the prompt are going to be answered with specific paragraphs in your paper. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But first, let's go over the topics. You are going to be assigned topics by table group. Um, the research portion you will be doing together. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to be showing you a graphic organizer. You're going to be making a copy of that graphic organizer, and you are going to be collaborating with the members of your table group to fill out that graphic organizer. Uh, you are also going to share that graphic organizer with me, and I will be able to monitor you in real time as you are working. So even if I'm not walking around the room, I will be able to look at what you're doing on my screen, um, and I'll also be able to offer pointers um, as you go through that. That'll actually help me to support you. Our first topic is the Trail of Tears. Uh, you will find that on pages 192, 193 in your book. A second topic is the Louisiana Purchase. You can see the page numbers there. Uh, the third topic is the Annexation of Texas. And so what we're talking about is the Texas settlers seeking independence from Mexico and eventually joining the United States. We are not talking about the aspect of Texas related to the Mexican-American War because that is a separate topic. Uh, we're also talking about the annexation of Oregon, the Oregon Treaty of 1846 between the British and the United States that set what is now the current border between Canada and the United States at the 49th parallel. And we also have the Mexican-American War, which is always everyone's favorite topic, but not everybody can do that topic. A maximum of two table groups will be doing that topic. And you do not get to trade topics with other table groups. You must do the topic that you are assigned. And your mission while you're doing this is to fill out a graphic organizer, which I am about to pull up. Just a moment. I need to get into Google Classroom here. We're going to pull up the graphic organizer from first period. There's first period. And the graphic organizer is right here. So what you're going to do is when you open this document, you are going to go to File and Make a Copy. You're going to have one person in your group do that. You only need to have one person in your group do that. Uh, I'm not going to make a copy right now because I'm just going to work with this copy. And then once one person in your group has done that, you're going to share it with the other people in your group, either based on their student number email address through the district or just type in their first and last name and it should pull up. You're also going to share that document with me so that I can monitor you in real time. Uh, I have once again copied the prompt here at the top, but I've taken the pieces of the prompt and placed them on the left side so that you should know what will be in each paragraph of your paper. And I've also created little blurbs here to give you more specificity as to what should be in each of these boxes. Each of these boxes will eventually become your paragraphs um, and so this will be the graphic organizer you write your paper with. Again, you're doing the research together as a group, but you must write your own individual paper. I want to be exceptionally clear about that. Paragraph two, what lands were in question? Uh, you're going to talk about geographic areas, regions, and states um, that are involved. And who lived in or owned the land? So you're going to talk about the Native Americans who may have been on that land, and you're going to talk about any other foreign powers like Spain, Great Britain, or Russia that may have had interest in the land that you're studying. 
Also, when it comes to defining manifest destiny in paragraph one, use the definition that we learned on our vocabulary list number three. Uh, paragraph three, what events took place? So give a detailed list of the actions and events that transpired that allowed America to achieve its goals related to the land or the geographic area that you were studying. Uh, it's a very general description because depending on your topic, that's going to look different. Final results and long-term consequences, um, separate from the events that took place, what was the end result? And how did that end result have long-term consequences for the country? And then in paragraph five, in your opinion, were the results of your topic positive or negative and why? After you've done all your research, after you've learned what you're supposed to learn, what opinion do you have about it? You need to have an opinion, you need to make a claim, and you need to cite fact-based evidence to support your claim, and that should be in your conclusion. By the time I'm done reading your conclusion, I should know what your perspective is, and I should feel that you've become knowledgeable enough about your subject that your opinion has validity, that it's meaningful, that it makes sense, that I can say to myself, you know what you're talking about, and your opinion is based on facts. Remember, your opinions should always be based on facts. Your facts should not be based on your opinions. It's one of my favorite quotes. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're now looking at the tunnel here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this explanation of your social studies analysis assignment. We're going to go ahead and get to work. And if you were absent, you are watching this video because you were absent. And this is helping you to learn and understand what it is you're going to be doing. And with that, this is once again Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.